This is going to be verse by verse of Hebrews chapter 7. And we're going to see a very interesting character named Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, 1 says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. So Melchizedek is one of the most interesting characters in the Bible. There's a lot of different views on who he actually is. Some say he was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Some say he was Shem. Some say he was an appearance of the Holy Ghost. Some say he was a son of Adam and Eve before the fall, who never ate off the tree. I've heard of those who believe he is Enoch because he is said to have no end of life. Also, I've heard that he could just be a man named Melchizedek, who's a type of Jesus Christ. Just simply a man named Melchizedek and not anybody in particular. And maybe we can't know for sure who he is, but it does give some details about him. It says he's king of Salem. Salem, like Jerusalem. It says he's also a priest, a priest of the Most High God. And that is a Gentile phrase because Gentiles believed in more than one God, with one of them being the highest. Um, Melchizedek was a high priest before Levi was even born, so he's a Gentile high priest. Uh, he blessed Abraham after the slaughter of the kings, so Melchizedek was for righteous war. Abraham fought a righteous war against ungodly men. It says in Hebrews 7, 2, To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Melchizedek received tithes from Abraham. A tenth is a tithe. So these two men were alive at the same time. And you say, well, this means he couldn't be Shem. Shem was one of Noah's sons. But you're forgetting something. Don't forget how long these men lived. Shem was still alive during the time of Abraham. And I'm not saying he's Shem. I have no idea. But you can't rule him out for this reason. Because Shem lived to be 500 years old. After the... He, well, not, he lived older, to be older than that. But after the flood, he lived 500 years. That's after the flood. And his life would have went right on into Abraham's life. Something crazy is Noah hadn't been dead for very long before Abraham showed up. You see, if you, a very interesting study is to look at the ages of these people in Genesis and see which famous character's life overlaps another famous character's life. So Melchizedek is king of righteousness and king of peace. If you want peace then you need to first get the righteousness of Jesus Christ by believing on him to save you. Then, after you're saved, live righteous. Then you will have peace. If you want peace, then you need to live righteous. Melchizedek is king of righteousness and king of peace. That's just like Jesus. Melchizedek, no matter who he is, is a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Hebrews 7, 3, Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abrideth a priest continually. So Shem was without father, mother, or descent. This could mean that the Bible just doesn't say who his father or mother is, because it doesn't. So this makes you think that... um. He could be a, a picture of Jesus Christ because he is without beginning of days or end of life. That's something that makes people think it's a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus because he hath no not beginning of days nor end of life. Then you get into that phrase, made like unto the Son of God. So is he the Son of God or is he just like the Son of God? That makes it tough. Although Nebuchadnezzar said the fourth man in the fire was like the Son of God. So we can't forget about that. But, you know, it says without father, without mother. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's got the Father, the Heavenly Father. And in the sense of his flesh, he had Mary, an earthly mother. So that doesn't match the Lord Jesus Christ. But the... Having neither beginning of days nor end of life matches Jesus Christ. And 
made like unto the Son of God, that matches the Lord. A bride of the priest continually, that matches the Lord because he are, is our high priest. So Melchizedek abideth a priest continually. So whoever he is, he's still a high priest. Hebrews 7, 4. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So he is a man. And it, that matches every person that I listed that people accuse him of being because all those are men. And Jesus is a man. Shem is a man. Uh, Enoch is a man. A son of Adam and Eve before the fall would be a man. You know, that matches all of them. Abraham gave him a tenth of the spoils. So spoils is the goods Abraham gathered after he defeated those ungodly men in war. So Abraham gave Melchizedek the tenth of the spoils. And Hebrews 7, 5 says, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So under the law you were required to give tithes to the priests to keep the work going. But this was before the law, when, when Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. And the priests come out of the loins of Abraham. It goes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Levi came from Jacob. But you see, Melchizedek was before the law. He was a, a Gentile high priest. Hebrews 7, 6 says, But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So Melchizedek's descent is not counted from Levi. Because he was before Levi was even born. He's even before Abraham. As Jesus, and as Jesus said, this matches Jesus. Because as Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. One thing is for certain, and that is Melchizedek, at the least, is a type of Jesus Christ. He is someone that gives us an illustration of Jesus Christ. They are like one another. So Melchizedek blessed him that had the promises, that is Abraham. And God gave the promise of the seed to Abraham and the land grant. In Hebrews 7, 7. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. So this is saying Melchizedek is better than Abraham, just like Jesus Christ is better than Abraham. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. <clears throat> Hebrews 7, 8. And here men that die receive tithes, and there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. So the here men that die receive tithes refers to the Le Levitical priesthood that was real mortal men who die, but Jesus Christ is a better priest who doesn't die. He lives forever. And verse 8 says, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. Now, was this Melchizedek still alive when Paul wrote Hebrews? Once again, it makes you think it's a direct reference to Jesus and not only a type. It's just a very, very complicated character in the Bible. Hebrews 7, 9. As I may so say, Levi also who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. So, how did he do this if Levi had not been born yet at that time? Look at the next verse. It says in Hebrews 7.10, For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So Levi was in the loins of Abraham when Melchizedek met him. Hebrews 7.11, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So the Levitical priesthood wasn't perfection. Hebrews 7, 19 says, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. So we needed a perfect high priest, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why he was called after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron. Aaron was a Levitical priest under the law, 
and the law made nothing perfect. You can't get saved by the law, but you get saved by Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7, 12, and 13, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he, he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. The another tribe is Judah. Jesus is from the line, is, Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah, not Levi. To be a priest under the law, you had to be a Levite. So for the priesthood to be changed, there had to be a change also of the law. Jesus isn't a Levite. He is of Judah. Revelation 5.5 5 calls him the lion of the tribe of Judah. So for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe. That would be Jesus from the tribe of Judah, of which no man gave attendance at the altar because the, the, the priesthood was the Levites, not Judah. Hebrews 7, 14 and 15, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for then, that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. So Melchizedek was a better priesthood because he was before the law. So Jesus is after the similitude of him and not of Aaron. Hebrews seven sixteen and 17. Who was made, not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So endless life and priest forever once again makes you think Melchizedek lives forever. Making you think maybe it was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. Hebrews 7.18, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. So the law is weak and unprofitable. It dealt with flesh and blood sinners who weren't born again. The law couldn't get anyone eternal salvation. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. The law is weak and unprofitable. Hebrews 7, 19, for the law made nothing perfect. Nobody was ever saved by keeping the law, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. See, nobody ever kept the law 100%. There was always a breaking of the law. But when they broke it, they had those sacrifices. They would offer the prescribed sacrifice when they broke the law. And this gave them temporary forgiveness of sin it never could take away their sin so but but men in the old testament they got to the heart of the earth when they died by keeping the law offering the prescribed sacrifice when they broke it and of course they had faith of course there was grace of course there was mercy involved from the lord but what would have happened if they didn't offer those sacrifices that'd be the question to ask yourself but the law is weak and unprofitable we need the lord jesus christ the old testament saints never got to the third heaven without the blood of the lord jesus christ being shed because our hope is jesus christ titus 2 13 calls him our blessed hope he's the bringing in of a better hope Ephesians 2.13 says we are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Hebrews 7.20, And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. So Jesus Christ was made priest by an oath. It wasn't hereditary. He was of Judah and not Levi. Levi is the priestly tribe. Judah wasn't. So inasmuch as not without an oath... He was made high priest, made priest. Hebrews 7, 21, For those priests were made without an oath, that is, the Levitical priests. But this, Jesus, with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 
So Jesus is like Melchizedek because Melchizedek wasn't from the tribe of Levi. He was before Levi. Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. And he's also before Levi. The Lord himself made Jesus Christ high priest. Hebrews 7.22 By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Look at Hebrews 8.6 But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, but how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So Jesus Christ is better. That's what the book of Hebrews is about, Jesus being better. He, he made a surety of a better testament. John 1, 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ brought in a much better testament. He brought in the New Testament with his death. In Hebrews 9, 16, it says, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Now, Hebrews 7, 23, And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. There were many priests because they all were defeated by death. Jesus Christ is a priest forever and a better priest because he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And there is no need for anyone to take his place. They'll never take his place. Hebrews 7, 24, But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. There isn't anyone who is a successor to the priesthood of Jesus Christ. All the Catholic priests are completely unbiblical we already have an high priest hebrews seven twenty five. wherefore he is able to also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them so he's able to save them to the uttermost that means anyone who wants to be saved can get saved from the uttermost to the guttermost you can come unto god by him that is the only way to get saved and get to god is by our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 saith, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So Jesus Christ makes intercession for us. 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 John 2, 1, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. For if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So Hebrews seven twenty five says, Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He is our intercessor. Romans eight thirty four. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So Jesus Christ is our go-between with the Father. We can pray to God because of him. He gets us straight into the throne room. Hebrews 7, 26, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Jesus Christ came down as a man. He became us. Even though he was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And Romans 8, 3 says, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So, <clears throat> he came down in the likeness of sinful flesh. He was sinless, but he, put, uh, he took on flesh, just like us. And he became our sin on the cross. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he knew no sin. Because as Paul says, he was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. That's why he can save. He has perfect sinless blood. Uh, 1 Peter 1.19 But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. And talking about him again in Hebrews 7, 27, 
who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. See, the Levitical priests couldn't just offer sacrifices for the sins of the people. They had to sacrifice for their own sins first. Jesus Christ has no sin. So he didn't have to offer for himself. Then, since he is perfect, he only had to sacrifice once for every person. So Jesus Christ died once for all the sins of mankind. Hebrews 7, 28, For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. So the law made men high priests who had infirmity. They had their problems. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. They had problems. They needed sacrifices for their self. They needed a Savior their self. But the Lord's oath made Jesus Christ high priest who is holy, harmless, undefiled, sinless from the past and the present and in the future. He is consecrated forevermore. But this has been Hebrews chapter 7, verse by verse, and I hope I've encouraged you to study it on your own.